Hello, everyone. Happy. Is it Wednesday? I think it's Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Welcome in to the Daily Sales Show by Sell Better. We are so glad that you're here today because we are talking about how to write a cold email that converts. Are you ready? I think like we need like an emoji dance party in the chat. If you're just chiming in or just tuning in here, we have half of uh we have a meeting we got jack and zach we put out a missing persons report he will be here soon i can tell uh don't worry we have located him he is joining in he will be here soon so let's find out who's in the room jack thanks for being here no worries thank you for having me leslie this is the sell better it's probably one of my favorite things to do and that sounded sarcastic but i genuinely meant that <laughs> uh I hope so. I love hanging out with you guys. Always a good time. You guys, everyone here is in for a treat today. If this is your first time at a Sell Better show, we do a live free show every single day of the week. You can scan that QR code on your screen or head to sellbetter.xyz and see a list of all of our upcoming shows and all of our previous recordings. Speaking of recordings, you will get the recording from today in your email tomorrow. It's magic. Speaking of magic... I can't go any further without saying thank you to our fantastic partners. Today's show is brought to you by Apollo. Apollo is a uh, data tool that's going to help you find accurate emails, phone numbers, get better data insights into your leads um, with some of their enrichment tools. And also our wonderful partner, Magical. It's a Chrome extension. Our, actually, Jack, you use Magical, yeah? Yeah, I I, I love it. I've been... Uh... I wonder how you use it, but I'll show. Can I show you how I use it? Because I've I've had a lot of success with it lately. I booked a yeah, meeting yeah. using it today. Let me. Uh, Here, let me stop sharing. You give us a a quick sneak peek of your how you're using magical. Give us like the the commercial. Okay. You guys version. are gonna you guys are gonna <laughs> love this, right? So, I go to who's viewed my profile. Okay, who's who's engaging with me, and I'll try and connect with people. So then I'll be like, right, okay, who's somebody that I'd probably want to speak to. Uh, that might be a good shout. Mm, Ryan McCormick. I've never spoken to this guy, I don't think, right? Then you've got magical here, so or you can do it like that. I'll just go like that. And then I've got these messages ready. So I'll go viewed profile. And I'll put his name in there. So his name's Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Saw you viewed my profile. Typically, it's for one of a few reasons. To help get more meetings, to help with sales training, to see if I'm wearing the shirt in my photo as a bet. It's the Larry shirt, isn't it? Bang. That is sent. Simple. Um, so that's how I use Magical. And especially for like Candly Link or like automated messages, it just saves a lot of time. So if you're in the time, get Magical. Oh my gosh. Amazing. I actually haven't used it for LinkedIn messaging, but I'm going to immediately now. And you guys, missing persons report canceled. So we so found sorry. him. I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome in. I'm going to fill everyone in on what to expect here. We are about to dive in. We're going to do some live email reviews. And then I have asked Jack and Zach to share with us like some of the ways that they're m improving their messaging for them, their teams, their clients, and uh, what some of their favorite pattern interrupts are. So are you guys ready to just dive in? So ready. So ready. So ready. Audience, like everyone, give me. Oh, actually, let's see. Let's see. Let's see your favorite. Um, your favorite emoji in the chat. If you're ready to see some live email, I don't know. Zach, Jack, throw your live your favorite emoji out there too. Make sure your chat is changed to everyone and not just host and panelists, so we can see your emojis. Um, I, I know as a millennial. I love a good emoji. Usually they come in threes for me. We got some good ones here. There we go. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike sent it to host and panelists, but uh, <laughs> Mike's got an angry emoji favorite. <laughs> so angry because he's thinking, why emails and not just cold calling? But hey, emails work when they're done right, guys. That's right. Done right. Is there a pun in that? <laughs> what? Oh, I, don't, I, don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Very How good. are you spelling that exactly? I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you're here as well. Nice jumper, by the way. Thanks, man. It's summer. <laughs> so let's start off. 
with email number one submission here. I'm going to pull it up on the screen so everyone can see these were submitted to us by our fantastic audience, you. So number one here says, good morning, Tilly team, TGIF. It's Wednesday, but this would be sent on a Friday. Hope you're doing amazing. This email may come to you as a surprise. However, I wanted to introduce myself and my team at Impact Care as we have been working closely with several TLE franchise locations with their staffing needs. We are a recruiting agency based out of Fort Collins that has helped various organizations across the country from healthcare to early childhood education. After noticing that your team is on the lookout for multiple positions right now, I thought expanding our TLE partnerships with you all could help alleviate some of the internal stress you may be experiencing. Experiencing. As we know firsthand, the challenges staffing can bring. If you're interested, I would love to discuss what a potential partnership might look like and how our team could be beneficial. Let me know your thoughts and a smiley well, face. Okay. We're going to let you know our thoughts, Leslie. Don't you worry <laughs> about that. <laughs> let us know, just like first overarching, give us the keep, the happy, like what you loved about this email. Literally, isn't it? Like I like I don't know who this person is, but if they were something in the sky, I'm gonna say this this person was the sunshine. Wow. You know what I mean? Really poetic, actually. That was beautiful. Yeah. That was really beautiful. If you're here in the audience, I mean you are the sunshine. Everyone here is the sunshine. You are the sunshine. Sorry. Um yeah, it was like it was real like energetic, I think. Like you can feel that energy. I bet there'd be an absolute dream to work with. I bet they're like a, yeah. a relationship. Morale style. booster. Mm. The okay. chief morale officer. Chief morale officer. I know you did a rewrite. Do you want to bring, you want me to bring that up and then we can kind of talk about your thoughts there? <laughs> okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Here is the, we have a meeting rewrite. Subject line. First thing you're probably thinking of the rewrite is, oh, my God, where have all the words gone? Um, <laughs> I, I think it's like a rule of thumb, especially with email. The majority of people are looking at emails on their phone. So it's like, a, does it fit in my phone? Like like you were reading that out, Leslie, and it felt very, very wordy. It's like, can we get to the point? Short, short but sweet um, is probably the, the best place to be. Zach, your thoughts? Uh, yes, and the, the the issue with the other email was, as much as it was high energy, it was very based on like, I'd love to do this. I'd love this to be about a partnership. We'd love to, it was very front, which is, which is lovely. Like if I met someone like that in real life that was like, oh, I would really love to be friends with you or something, like that's great. But prospects have the same favorite subject, regardless of what industry or sector you're in, and that is themselves. So the whole thing should be led around you. And we find the rules are disarming honesty, lots of rooms to say no, and just getting kind of straight to the point. Yeah, we mm. all love talking about ourselves. We I certainly do. I want to point out the subject line on yours too. Can you help? Talk to me about like, have you seen a lot of success with that subject line? Yes, I'm always looking for... Where does it show up in real life? So if someone stopped me in the street and said, can you help? I'd stop and speak to them. If someone stopped me in the street and said, thank God it's Friday, and start giving me a high five, I'd probably think, what is going on? So I'm always looking for, is there synergy in real life? What would have the most response to other humans? Mm -hmm. it, was, um, it was a word that I guess... I don't want to make it too negative, but I've got a bit of a pet peeve word. I don't want this whole show to be a grind of my gears, but there's a word, the word, any guess what the word was in the first one that stood out to me and it irks me? Hmm. Um, oh, Mike says might in the chat. Mm, so they're, they're good. They're like filler words. It was actually the word partnership. Okay. Okay. And I'll, t I'll tell you why, because... I get where they're probably coming from, especially from recruitment. It is like it's a it's a partnership because we're going to be working together and it's that morale. I get a lot of messages of people like maybe we can partner up on something. And it, for me, it's like I, I want to know the difference. Like, am I going into this? You're going to sell me something or a partnership is like two people in love that are coming together with equal opportunity. A partnership where I give you my money. That's a sales exchange. So it's just for, maybe that's just me and my brain. But it's just like what is a partnership like like do you know what i mean am i, I the only one i feel like no. i'm the only one 
I know exactly. Sorry, what you mean. And that's why we're a partnership. So I'm in love <laughs> with you. And you take all my money. <laughs> I am interested, like in the chat, let us know. Partnership bother you? Yes, no. Give us your give us your yes, no answer. Sometimes, maybe. I let me know. Partnership, yes or no. Just say yes or no. That's all yeah. we want to say. Bothersome. Bothersome, Bothersome. yeah. <laughs> Oh, or overused. Okay, so I, there's some grind your gears here going on. I do want to point out one other thing. I'll bring it up again that I think is a unique way to position. Um, if I said I had X number of people with blank ready for positions, right? It's like instead of I instead of just saying I have this or this is a this is a component of our service or our software or whatever it is, you kind of switch this around a little bit. Talk to me about the framing of this question or state. I mean, it could be a statement, but this case, it's a, a question. Yeah. So it's, it's called a, a Socratic question. If I said X, what would you tell me is the, is the framework? Um, what I'm looking for is to almost answer a question. So give an answer, but ask a question in the same breath. The, Negative framing is probably the one of the more important components as well. So that I'm guessing you're going to tell me you're already covered. I'm guessing you're going to tell me everything's perfect. I'm going for ultra negative so that I elicit a response. If you think about people ringing you up and saying, do you like drinking water? Yeah. But if I rang up and said, I'm guessing you're not interested in drinking any more water, you're like, what? Who's this guy? What's going on? I love water. Yeah, exactly. Um, just the way our brains are wired, the emotional response in our amygdala favors negative information 60 to 80 percent of us um 60 to 80 percent it favors negative information so even the most positive person is still wired to favor 60 percent negative information that is so interesting yeah using that psychology using <clears throat> we, we're, we're doing it for the amygdala um exactly. <laughs> yeah exactly so jack <laughs> the people want to know what word would you use instead of partner or partnership I don't Slave. think you even need to, like, what did you say? Slave. Slave, yeah. I don't even think you need to, like, like like in our one, we've not replaced partnership with anything. It's like, you, you just don't need to imply that it's something that it isn't. Like, from that, it's like people can understand it's a sales email. Like, the people, people want to put things in boxes. Our chimp brain is trying to work things out all the time. So I'm receiving this, I'm going to sales email. When I'm receiving that, I'm thinking partnership, like working together, the sponsorship, is there, what what is it? So we like to put things in boxes. There's an argument to be had that, that being vague might help, but I would move away from any like collaboration or partnership or any words like that. Um, one of the things I was going to say, um, and you'll see it as a theme throughout, did you notice what the call to action was on that, that last email that we shared? The rewrite. Okay. I'll bring it up again. Nothing. So I'm guessing they've already been filled. So it's, it's, it's a question to, to get a response. Too many sales emails are, here's my diary look, link. Have you got 15 minutes next Thursday? And it just feels like someone's reaching into the computer or your phone and trying to grab your wallet. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do with our call to actions is, I'm guessing you've all, they've already been filled. It's a question. It's to get the conversation flowing and then once the conversation's flowing, that is typically the best part where you can pick up the phone and use emails, hold emails as like an opener. And then it's a case of like, I thought I'd be a bit of a weird one. We were speaking over email. I thought I'd just be brave and uh, get to the point on phone as it's easier. And then you've used that because the whole goal with cold email is to get a meeting, is to have a conversation with this person, see if they have the problem and if they're motivated to solve it. So if the goal is to get that, pick up the phone and speak to them. But some people aren't, you're not able to get hold of, people are busy. Um, and, and you'll see that as we move on with, with different call to action. So for me, the softer, the better. So I'm hearing there's probably no way that you're going to give us all of your credit card information. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the next one. <laughs> okay. Our next writer says, subject line, software development, hi, first name. What tech executives <laughs> often hate are project delays and having to go into meeting after meeting to get to the bottom of it. Looking at release plans, burn down charts, performance issues, following up individually when things don't work out, only to be able to get a grasp on the situation. 
Our team solves this by taking on a result-oriented, self-managed approach to software projects. We take ownership of end-to-end -end delivery, allowing our customers to spend their time on the core of their business while we deliver working software. A release every two weeks without the need for someone to spend time managing the team. We've been doing this for over 30 years and more than 200 customers. Would you be open to learning more? If it's interesting, can I send over some more info? Can I say something, Leslie? Please do. I want you to read me a bedtime story. <laughs> yeah, I'll just uh, I'll start a YouTube channel reading. I mean, your tone is <laughs> wonderful. Um, so there's... This one isn't necessarily like a, a bad email. I think the issue people make with emails is you're almost trying to imply that someone's already interested with a lot of the stuff that gets sent out. So, so this would be great if someone's brain was already engaged and they were interested, okay? But because they're not, and they're still in that kind of fight or flight response, they're still assessing, is this gonna be worth my time? That our team solves this by taking on a results orientated managed self approach software projects. We do you'd lose me there. You'd totally lose me there because I'm I'm not in that deep thought state yet. I'm not engaged with the technicalities. I'm still in is this interesting? Is this boring? What's the risk? I'm still in that kind of fight or flight mode. But it mm -hmm. is a good email if someone was already engaged and interested. Okay. So that being said, I know you guys are all about the phones and phone experts, in my opinion, your opinion. Thank you. <laughs> um, do you think that this, I feel like a lot of this could translate to a conversation back and forth. Agree? Agree. Keep going. Do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm always looking. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I do agree. Agree. We've got a little tester. If you've if you already got this later on, Leslie, then sorry for jumping ahead. But we use a frame here. We we would call it Pub Talk. Hopefully that's okay for other people that aren't in the UK. But basically, any cold call script or any email script, you would have to be able to explain it to run the pub and then understand it. They couldn't look at you and go, "What are you talking about?" So we always run things through. That. It's quite a harsh filter. But before we do messaging, it's like, would this make sense to someone if you just bought them a beer and just told them it, would they go, okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Or would they say, what do you mean? Integration and cloud source, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? It has to kind of pass that pub talk test. After how many pints? At least three. Although I'm a sober man, so it should be none. <laughs> I like it. I like the pub talk test. Let's see your rewrite. You want to talk us through the rewrite, Jack? Yeah, so it's, it's the same psychology. It's this you. Uh, people are going to remember with a subject line, our goal is to um, be mysterious and, and in, intrigue people to open it. So when people see, is this you, what are they expecting? Are they expecting to open up an email when it's them in their budgie smugglers and it's a photo that's been taken on their holiday to Devon? Who knows? But they're curious enough to say, is this you? So bang, I'm intrigued. Okay. We've never spoken before. You've got that honesty. You're up front. You're allowing people to say no. I have a feeling I might be way off in terms of messaging. So it's like I'm stepping back. I don't know. And I'm just telling you what I do. If I said I was normally invited in by tech executives who are struggling with software projects being finished on time or a skill set shorted in the current team, would you be the wrong person to speak to? Okay. We're going for that soft call to action. Although the call to action on, the, on that last email, I actually thought was was quite strong. It's like I can send over some information. It wasn't hard. Um, um, so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a soft go-to. Would you be the wrong person to speak to? We get it a lot where people say, yeah, I am. Speak to Bill. Cool. Now I know who to go to. Or no, no, not at all. I'm the right person to speak to. And then we're in. We're just looking for them to just open that door ajar and we can just slither our head through and have a conversation. <laughs> oh, oh, I like the head. I like really the head motion. It. Again, it's the negative reframe though, right? Like it's not, are you the correct person to speak to? It's, would you be the wrong person to speak to? And I think that like, playing back to that psychology, people want to come in and rescue you. People want to be the one who are like, no, no, it's okay. Come here. Let me give you a warm hug and bring right? you down the right path. Really interesting. Correct. Exactly. I'll tell you what, more than correct. Jack, we're we... getting a lot of feedback from you, mate. I don't know if you, you know the way you've set things up. 
but it's quite bad. You can change that straight away. Give me two seconds. You guys carry on. <laughs> okay, let's keep rolling. I do. Um, I know there were a couple of people talking about the subject lines, and I do think that's like subject line is a really easy A B split test to see if, it, especially if it works in your market, whether that's the region you're in, whether it's the industry you're in. Using like you can use a body framework and switch out a couple different subject lines and and test out what works mm. best for you. Should we? Just, oh yeah. You want to roll into uh, another email? I, I think that's just so wise. Let's do that. Okay. Mm. <laughs> um, People don't know what budgie smugglers are. Google yeah. images. You'll know in time. How's that for a voice? Is that nice or not? That's a really nice. I was just hearing myself back when I was talking, which is one of my worst nightmares. You don't usually hate it. Especially if you love a cold call. I mean, do you record your calls? We did. We just did a live cold call intro before this, and I booked a meeting, and Jack didn't. Oh, did you book two? Congrats. I nearly. It would have been. It wouldn't have been right. It, the guy at the end, he was like, "Well, oh, we might." I don't know. It just didn't feel right. So I just there left it. Go. The ethical salesman, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, back to emails. Stop. <laughs> Let's get to it. Okay, so here's the email number three. Uh, distillery success subject line. Hello, CJ. You have an expertise in distil distilling in sodas X. Our customers have automated their production process and maximized revenues and profits. Blank has achieved the following with spirits manufacturers X and Y. We've achieved this with our software, which is a continuous process control system with integrated manufacturing execution system functions out of the box. These customers have achieved automation functions at a low price. Standard process control system with integrated recipe management, batch tracking and tracing, central user interface for visualization. I propose we have a conversation to understand how we might work together with your consulting projects. Regards. Beautifully read. It <laughs> reads a bit like some sort of advert in the 90s, though, doesn't it? Our customers mm. have an automated process. Oh, they I should have. Ooh. Got like a bit of that kind of thing going on, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone's summing it up in the comments. It's it, it doesn't pass the pub test. Someone just put three three points needed. Um, it's very sell off the bat. The the other thing that is is I think somewhat interesting, and I think this is maybe a throwback to before there was LinkedIn things. People really lean on that kind of social proof piece, but it can backfire. So if you throw out certain companies, so like if we were on a cold call, say, and someone said. Who else do you work with that's like us? And I name one of their competitors. That's mm. not necessarily a reason to work with us. That might be a reason mm. for like, oh, actually, I, I can't work with you then, if that's the case. So we shouldn't assume because I work with Coca Cola that Pepsi would be interested. It's it's, it's too assumptive. That is the exact issue I with those companies. Pepsi was a client of mine. And I had brought the wrong brand bottle water oh. and I was um, speaking in Coca-Cola and it, it, it like ruined my whole pitch. It was terrible. <laughs> you did. So you're right. like, sometimes you think that those proof points are going to help you, <laughs> but they were like, we don't want to do anything they're doing. No, thank you. And I was like, okay, sorry. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Did Can you, I come back that, and it, start over? Can I? And I did. Like did, I put, I put my water in a bottle. I like threw it off the table. They laughed. But what still. water did you go in with? So you went in with the competitors' water, and then they were like, "Is that ironic that you do it that?" They thought, like, they immediately pointed it out, and I was like, "It oh. was what was in the lobby." I'm so sorry, but yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I, I just threw it across the room. They thought that was amusing, but you know. Hit someone in the head, <laughs> knock them out. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it, checked it behind me. Okay, let's look at your rewrite. Here we go. You want you Jack, want to read? do the honors. Hi, first name. This might be completely irrelevant, so feel free to delete. We've worked with a few similar spirit manufacturers in your space who are looking to automate their production processes. Usually this is because they want to save time, there's a risk of manual error, or they're spending too much on out-of-the-box software. If I had a couple of ideas, how against a conversation would you be? The subject line is production query. So, so again, it's a, it's a bit of a cheeky one, that one. We, we're trying to make it look like it's not a sales email, but like, like we say, the goal is to get opened up and, and get a little bit of intrigue. We're listing the problems, then we're going for that negative framing. How against a conversation would you be? It's not, here's my diary, when would 15 minutes be great? 
it's okay. it's good. I like I like the delivery. Yeah, yeah. I, I would um, echo Jack's sentiments and the social proof dilemma. I've answered in this email, so I've just put a few similar spirit manufacturers mm. that would elicit some curiosity of which ones, and then I can qualify okay. that before I answer. Like they're going to lean in a little bit. They're going to lean in. And if curiosity kills cats, you shouldn't eat cat food. You always the t-shirt sayings. I don't know. <laughs> do I, do I laugh? Do I, I'll just, I'll right. just smile and nod. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. My wife thinks I'm mentally ill. So let's find out if I'm not here the next time we do this, it's because I've been locked up. Mm. Ahmed not wants to wife. know in the chat, <laughs> one or two word subject line or a really long descriptive one or an intriguing one. Is it, what's your take? What's your go-to? What are you seeing most success with? Jack's probably the best man to ask this to. We've got a few clients where you've had some good success with email first, call later. So what do you normally go for, Jack? I, I just think like, you've got to think of like, what what is the, the like quick question is obviously the most common one that gets used all the time. Like you've got to stand out like, and, it, and it's the whole purple purple cow marks in effect like in a sea of black circles be a red x it's just being a little bit like even like putting something all in capital letters like i think del dupree does one line it's like i hope this email blows your insert um bum words in there like do you know what i mean it's like it just shocks you and you're a bit like whoa and then you're there on on the the back and you're like yeah. right okay um just like you know something but- big and bold when we first started our podcast, we got someone on the podcast by saying the subject line was, this is probably going to be the worst email you've ever opened. And he opened it and responded and was like, love the email subject line, by the way. So it's horses for courses as well, like just trying to do what no one else is doing. Yeah. And remember, it won't always work. Nothing works 100% of the time. This is sales. And just because quick question works once or twice or it has worked and it, say it worked and it brought in a 100K deal – um it's it's don't don't just remember one swallow doesn't make a summer makes a good night though and with that (laughs) (laughs) delete and no i'm just kidding um i like i think the industry piece comes into it like if you are government maybe not the expletive in the subject line if you're selling into healthcare. Mm. Maybe something that's not like emergency, right? Like you don't you don't want to get that creative depending sure. on your you don't want to upset someone um necessarily. Yeah. I don't know, maybe you do. But in terms of like keeping the sale later down the road, like mm. creative, but think about your industry and take that into consideration, in my opinion. Exactly. It's like lying on a cold call at some point someone's gonna catch your answer, so there's no point doing it. Yeah, I think I think a great one is if you are going to utilize all of them, cadence and stuff like that, and you're if you can speak with a couple of champions at a company, and then you go straight to the CEO and it's like uh, re conversation with Jeff Goldenstein, whatever. It's like hi, I've just got off the phone. I was speaking to Jeff. He mentioned X, Y, and Z. Said it would be worth having a conversation with you, and you can be a bit cheeky with that. That has got me personally so many times. Um, I, I remember getting one that had our VP's name in the subject line at my previous company. And I went to my director and I was like, oh, but I know Brian wants me to talk to this guy. I don't know. Is this real? I don't know. But then it has all of us talking internally. And now I'm like sitting at a table with my director and my VP discussing the sales email I got. And now I'm like, how can we repurpose this and Mm. use it with our team? It was, I think it's, um, referencing other people. It can backfire. But so don't lie, like actually have that conversation. Yes. And just like like utilize it. But yeah. Exactly. Be ethical people. Don't don't be stamp that. We Mm. stamp the ethics uh piece. Yeah. Don't lie. (laughs) You'd think we're actually like two of the biggest sales scumbags, but we actually aren't. You have we are scumbags, though. We don't Mm. lie. Okay, let's go into the next email. What's your problem? Subject line. Good afternoon, X. I wanted to follow up on my voicemail as well as provide some context to the subject line. If I told you I help businesses overcome the below hiring challenges, A, poorly vetted candidates and wasted time interviewing them, B, 
candidates are in three to four pro other processes resulting in a bidding war. C, transactional relationships with agencies and no real depth of understanding of your business. You might tell me you don't recognize them or it's not something you deal with directly. Best. Just beautiful delivery again. You don't so miss lovely. a word. Um, it, it's the, the, There's elements of this that I like. I like the three problems. People like threes. And the yeah. problems are very succinct. I think that mm. would pass the pub talk test. The voicemail thing, make sure you've actually called someone because they annoy me and Jack. We get these ones. And no one's called me. No. So they're, they're, they're quite. So again, going back to the lion thing, make sure you've actually tried to call me if you're going to use that one. Um, and I don't like the subject line. That's my only issue. I think it might. Who, what, why do I have a problem? What are you on about? It feels. It's, it's a bit uh, risky. Mm. I do, you know what I do like? I like the uh, segmentation, the way it looks done, done. Mm. By the way, you said that. Rather than there, it goes like that. That I'm was very good. Poorly. What does Leslie think? I want to hear quick because I see Philip. I had called them and with a with a cheeky smiley face. Um, did you get a response from this email? We have to know. We've got to I, know, Philip. The what's your problem um, subject line. I think that it, have you taken a disc profile assessment, the DISC disc profile assessment? I feel mm. like a lot of decision makers, depending on oh, mm. the persona, are a high D and they yeah. immediately go into the like, fight mode so exactly. they see that and they're like i don't have a problem you're my problem delete block forever exactly I exactly you've got Just... you've got to be careful with um assuming something's wrong to be mm. invited in to have that discussion like if you went to see a therapist and the therapist said yeah i went yeah i can tell what your problem is straight away mate yeah. you're like a right mess they go what yeah, you're an open book. I can I got I got all your problems right here. I do think, however, if you're selling into more of the like I or the C, this could be something that is going to like I not trying to put people in boxes, but typically speaking, HR leaders can fall into that category where they'll be like, Oh my gosh, did I like cause a problem? Let me open this and see what I did. And they'll they'll be more likely to respond to mm. to something like that. So it goes back to your persona. Mm. Can we see your rewrite? Mm. Yeah. Let's do it. it. Okay. So we thought because you've already called, missed call is just something like if you're a C-suite, your PA sent you this, reception sent you this. That is an email that if was if you received it, as I received them, I open those because I'm curious about, mm. oh, did I miss a call? Do I need to call someone back? It's not an email that can go unread. So first purpose was that curiosity open rate piece. Um, the next part was the appreciation that someone is busy, so I'll keep it short, a bit like we do on a cold call. I just tried to call you. Usually companies like, insert their company name, have noticed a few niggles when it comes to hiring. Could be poor vetted candidates, waste time interviewing, or working with very annoying recruiters. You might tell me, everybody you interview is perfect and you've not had a bad hire since 1999. <laughs> the third problem is probably the one like we've have got a few recruitment clients that we book meetings for recruitment is typical for they don't like to do any outreach themselves but they're great when they get on the jobs that's what that's what I'm, that's what i'm hearing um and when we're cold calling for recruitment companies a lot of people are quite happy to complain about how annoying recruiters are and it's a very emotional problem and selling happens emotionally so that is the number one problem regardless of how clever you are as a consultant if I can get the HR leader, the CEO, whoever it is moaning about the recruitment agencies they use, we're going to get a meeting because we can just be everything they're not. Mm. Jack? I, I was just thinking about the, the most common cold email I receive. I don't know if you're the same, Les, Leslie and Zach, but it's SEO and website design. Okay. Mm. Now, I get a lot of them. SEO, we can get you on the top of Google. Cool. What is a goggle? Not bothered. The ones, the ones that really get me, and I, and I, I actually find myself getting like mad. But I got a message not too long ago saying, "Really loving your cold calling videos, but your website is lacking. It needs to be a lot better." And like you feel it, you're like, "Who is this person?" Saying like, "Is that gonna like 
is that going to work? And maybe that's like a bit of a tactic to say, you know what, I've got, got you a bit emotional. And maybe it puts me into a reflective mode of like, maybe there is a problem there. But I promise you, by going down that lane, I'm not going to work with you. Like, you might get me to a point where I go and buy or I might go and solve that problem, but I'm not going to go with you. Like, so, like, what is your problem? Like, try really gunning for people and telling – nobody wants to be told they're doing something wrong or something bad. We've got to come to that conclusion ourselves. So if, you, if you're going into it saying, I saw on your website it's bad, I saw your job ads are bad, I saw blah, your reviews are bad, whatever, don't. It hurts, right? Yeah, it hurts big time. Are you okay? I'm in pain. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling under the strain of a bad website. What can I say? I'm Don't curious to hear how many yeah. emails do you think you delete every day without ever opening them? Actually, let me, let's see from everybody. Let's see from everybody. How many emails do you think you delete every day without ever opening them? I guess I'll, I'll share a story. And I know the CEO of Jiminy. Yeah, I don't know if you know Jiminy. It's a it's a um, software platform. She gets a thousand emails a week, a thousand cold emails a week. She deletes them on a Sunday night. How mad is that? Just in bulk. Wow. Just in bulk. She just sits there and goes, right. It's it's. I've got a couple of hours. I'm going to get rid of all my emails. I'm going to clear my inbox. So you've got to think. Someone's gone through a thousand. I think she gets maybe three cold calls. I shouldn't have said that. She's going to get bombarded with cold calls now. But <laughs> just pick, nobody's picking up the phone. It's like yeah. utilize everything. Like I know that we are the guys that slag off cold email. It does work. I can't believe that I've just said that live on t TV, but use it to your best ability. I'm, I can't vote, but I'm going to say 100 plus. What are people saying? Mm. Emails. Yeah, yeah I get people, are quite, people are quite strange about you, though, aren't they? People are <laughs> quite up. weird about you. If you comment on something and say, this was quite funny, and then you get like 400 likes on the comment, be like, he's, oh, he's so funny. He's so funny. Yes. He um, but he's he, not, like, Leslie. He also puts he's not. his he's a email. Bad person. Like, he subscribes for a lot of things, too. So <laughs> Jack does. Oh, yeah. Subscribes to bemyfriend.com. I like it. I'll be your friend. Um, I do want to talk just about like some of the strategies you've already shared, but I want to bring this up and kind of talk through it. So we talked about pub talk. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about short and sweet. Give me a, your take on keeping our email client focused. I know you mentioned like in that first one, but just give us a, give us a quick snippet here. Everyone has the same favorite subject themselves. So you should run all your messaging through that filter. So it shouldn't be, let's imagine, I'll take the pub talk example, right? So I'm a married man, but if I wasn't and I had to go and approach a female at the bar or a male, I'm not against that either, but I had to approach them at the bar and say, oh, I'm Zach. And they, what's your name? And they said, oh, I'm Sarah. And I just went, right, shut up, Sarah. Let me tell you how great I am and what I can do for you if we have a relationship. They'd just walk off. That's yeah. not the way people are wired. So what we're trying to do is make everything about the other side. So everything is about what is the thing that your potential client is banging their head against the wall that you fix and how does it show up? And typically when you find out how it shows up, that's when you get the real the real message in the reality that gets away from all the features and benefits and all that kind of stuff. I want to ask your opinion on this. Ahmed put it in the chat or in the Q and a section too, but you know, a lot of people talk about the personalization and like finding really specific things about people to connect with. Where do you both stand on that in an email, in a cold Jack? email? Well, Zach would probably lean, we're probably on very similar pages, but Zach, leaned further one way than me that you're probably best taking it because you're very anti yeah i don't like yeah. any personalization at all i, I think it's creepy and yeah, i know like, like some of this is some of this is like pub, but i'm id person if we're going back to this profile yeah. but if you reach out to me and say like oh i've looked on your profile know what school you went to and 
oh, I also play that same guitar that you play. Or my baby's also got chubby cheeks or whatever. It, like, it's just Here's like, a picture of your whole family in your home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did a drawing of a tragic moment from your past. Like, I, don't, I don't need that level of, like, just, just get to the point. I think okay. Jack is a bit nice. And there was a guy who booked a meeting with me based on something really personalized. But I took the meeting with him because I felt sorry for it, not because I was interested. And the cell went nowhere. So he basically wasted his time. So what he, do you talk about in your pub talk? No, I'm just kidding. Jack, you, <laughs> we, we make no small talk with Zach. And it's just no, I want to get to the order the meaning what, of life. As what do you want to eat? Exactly. Um, OK, Jack, you feel different, though? Not not too dis um, not not too different. I, th I think it's like I'm I'm personalization. No, but humor. Yes. So it's like if you, if you can revert it back to something and be like, oh, like saw this or like what? I don't know. I feel I feel con contradicted on it. But I think like I get why someone would do personalization. I think using AI to create personalization is the most ridiculous thing because it's like that's what people are doing these days. Right. I'm going to use all these tools to make things personalized. Right. Well, that's not that's not personalization like just grabbing somebody's like hometown from from a prof profile it's it's just weird i think like depends how far back you go as well i found out this about you it's like there's a level yeah you catch me on a, a good day yeah my my ego might be up for it and might be up for a chat but it's more like oh yeah i'm, I'm up for talking about this because you you've made it personalized i'm up for talking about myself yeah cool i'm up for talking about this thing that happened four years ago I'm not talking about the problem. I'm not talking about how they might be able to help me. So personalization, personalization can work to like have a conversation with somebody. Sales, probably not. I think like if you could really weave it into your product and your service, like if I emailed you guys and I was like, wow, your podcast, especially that episode, it hasn't launched yet with Leslie Douglas. Phenomenal. <laughs> um, loved when you said X, Y, Z. And I think that really relates to, and I can list my problem, different story. Are you responding? It's just, it, it's so risky <laughs> because, because it's, Again, this is this is just me, right? I'm extreme with this. I just think it's so risky. What if you got it wrong? And then first impressions are everything. Yeah, fair. you've got it. You've you've got it wrong. And actually, Leslie didn't mean that at all. And I know her, and she didn't. You know, like you could get it wrong. Yeah. But the best way to do personalization, and it's the long game. So can you really be bothered if you've got a quota to hit? But it's like, just just do nothing without an ask. Like the amount of people that over time have like it's just six months down the line or whatever but they've just been like i'm a big fan of the podcast i like it and then like you get to know people and then it's like listen i, I don't know if you'd be open to hearing me out but then it's still it's just more of like you've gotten in like and then you yeah. say well here's the problems do you have them no but i'm more likely to give you time of day yeah like the, the, the the purpose of it, like if we can leave anyone with anything the purpose of cold email cold linkedin is to get an opportunity to, to qualify in the first place so to jack's point you're just looking for that that in you're not looking to like get the deal done over email get qualified get the problem get get it all signed off you're looking for just the in to get even the opportunity to qualify mm. yeah we um just dropped your linkedin profiles in the chat for everyone go check them out go follow them Very and nice. um i if you have additional questions feel free to reach out to all three of us, gentlemen, thank you so much Personal for thank you as for always joining in. I do want to give another huge shout out to our sponsors today. Um, I am now gonna go like dig into my LinkedIn messaging with magical and my data with apollo we're just gonna have a big data party um so thanks again <laughs> magical and apollo tomorrow's show is simple frameworks to turn more demos into deals you can check it out at sellbetter.xyz and all of our other channels ever you you guys always just have such a wealth of information. Thank you so much for sharing Thank your you. time and all of your rewrites with us. It gave me, and I hope everyone else, a lot of ideas here. So thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. Leslie. See Bye. you soon. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye.